Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptos and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll start another new series here based on your suggestions. I'll probably start off with five of them and then see how things go. Um, if, if I wanted to do another five afterward, I'll definitely let y'all know. But this one is a brand new suggestion. I don't recall it actually being suggested before. And then looking at the information, I liked it because it ties in to one of my favorite movies of my youth. If you've ever seen that movie the little mermaid and i'm sure you have that tragic movie of sorts i mean it's a good movie it has some happy moments but still uh, the main basis of it is the tragedy of one person longing for another but them being of two different worlds in this case this is what it ties into so i wanted to show that comparison here and then also give all the information i can about it it's a very unique cryptid that's located across the sea in this case there in Ireland uh, the islands of Orkney and Shetland to be exact and it's called a selkie which you're looking at a drawing of here so basically what a selkie is it's just a marine creature of some sort half seal half human just depends on circumstances so it's either a full seal in one circumstance and then a human on another so let's go ahead and we'll talk about that here so again what is a selkie well it is apparently a long long known cryptid there in Ireland again specifically found near the islands of Orkney and Shetland those places there have been reporting encounters with the Selkies for hundreds of years so much so that it's part of their folklore so even more so it's considered a mythological creature so it's even taken on its own cultural uh, cultural aspect there now as far as the tragedy associated with it yes um, I wanted to talk about that and again compare it with the Little Mermaid because here are things go apparently Selkies have their own civilization in the sea and they live there just on their own however the way I read the information maybe I have some of it wrong but someone please point it out to me on the comments but though however whenever it's nighttime apparently they like to go out onto land because back in the sea there are actually seals or they're seals but then sometimes they're in human form somebody might have to point that out to me because um, it seems like at least the main common basis is this when they reach land they are seals but then they shed that seal like cover and underneath it is either a human man or a human woman and there they are in the dead of night just basically walking around as would be a normal person and then when they're ready to go back into the sea that's when they put on this seal like skin and then go back into their home I guess under the sea now as far as I uh, like when they get to it in their civilization whether they shed those uh, skins again I don't know exactly a hundred percent but at least when they come to land that's definitely its main attribute and that's how most people lots of fishermen lots of people that have lived there in those islands for so many years have quote unquote come in contact with these selkies because they see them from afar sometimes shedding their skin coming onto land and vice versa now where the tragedy comes into play is that there's some selkies that love to have more interaction with humans because the way I read this information it seems like those two worlds are far apart from one another but some of them actively seek one another so you could have a selkie seeking a human male or female and then vice versa you could have a human seeking a selkie male or female and when it comes to that the way it works is you basically have either a one of them encountering the other almost falling in love but realizing that because they're both from completely different worlds one will have to give up their world for the other and traditionally it seems to be the selkie that does so because the way I was reading it was some of the fishermen who fell in love with some of the female selkies they in turn were able to hold on to the skin the skin again that they shed from the sea and this seal like skin they just simply either keep it hidden or keep it locked up either way it's a hundred percent away from the grasp of the selkie female and then that way that female now is a regular human female and becomes a wife bears children something along those lines now those are the voluntary ones now there were some that I read 
where it's actually involuntary, what I mean is this, because sometimes some of these fishermen, the ones that were spying on these Selkies from afar, if they fell in love with one of these Selkies, but in turn, either were rejected or didn't the Selkie female didn't even know this person existed, well, this human, this male, would in turn steal that seal-like skin because apparently when that happens, it again forces the female Selkie to stay in human form and she in turn somehow becomes not like a slave but becomes like subservient, like they are basically at ransom because they have no way of knowing where their seal-like skin now is and so they're forced to stay with their fisherman husband or whoever that husband that man was for the remainder of life at least until they can find that skin again and then tales of this like in terms of people knowing when and in, in this case the uh, a man's wife was in turn a selkie was uh, you would know because if you're always seeing that woman just basically longingly staring out into the sea at multiple points throughout the day you know i don't know how many times a year and so forth when when that happens people would speculate that that woman was a selkie because there she was always longing to go back into the sea but she cannot because of her stolen seal skin so those are the more forced encounters but otherwise the tragedy of things seems to be that when you have these two worlds and one longs for the other um, and so one of them will have to make a sacrifice and again traditionally it seems to be the selkie whether it's a man or a woman having to do so and uh, basically shedding their skin and then staying with their human for the remainder of their life. Uh, there's another tragic aspect of this too because apparently what happens is some selkies and some versions of these stories they in turn cannot I guess shed their skin permanently like they'll have to stay in human form for just a short period and that means only having a very short contact with the human and then they must return to the sea like it, it made it seem like to me like they have to go back into their skin otherwise they will die afterward and when that happens that's even more tragic because the idea is I don't know why this number is there but it is whenever the selkie makes contact with their human let's say they fall in love with each other then they know that the, the Selkie has to go back into the sea. Once that happens, then they have to stay away for seven years. Uh, so I don't know, again, why seven years is a magic number, but that's the way this folklore story goes. They have to stay away for seven years, which in of itself is a tragic thing because if they're truly in love with each other, seven years uh, must be to them a very, very long time. And then by that point, who knows what else can happen afterward. Um, there are several books as well about the Selkies. There's one called Peter Kagan and the Wind that seems to be a tale showcasing a uh, fisherman named Kagan who happened to marry a Selkie to um, this one again mired in tragedy because apparently the way it goes was she married him. It seems like it was uh, mutual like they fell in love and so she voluntarily like got either rid of her skin or kept it hidden somewhere so that way she would not become a selkie afterward and stay in human form and there they were uh, just living happily but then under one circumstance I guess it must have been uh, some point of the year where the storms are going to be very very dangerous there he was Kagan going out into the sea doing his job she was telling him not to that it was way too dangerous to do so but he did so anyways probably trying to get food or whatever money for them and sure enough he was caught in a very horrible storm and then she realized this I don't know if it was telepathically or something else but her instincts told her that if she did not step in then he would lose his life so against the odds she put on back that seal skin of hers became a selkie again and then saved that ship but the minute she did that then apparently she knew she could not go back to the home like she would never have the ability to do something in terms of a human body again and so she sacrificed her quote unquote happy home to uh, to save the life of her husband because of these tragic circumstances so those are just uh, you know a bit of details associated with the selkies and again it reminded me so much 
of that great movie, The Little Mermaid from Disney, uh, because of the similar circumstances involved. So, but that's it. That's really all the information, at least here when it comes to the Selkies. By the way, as far as some theories as to how the origins of these true Selkies came about, there's the idea that maybe they were just people born normal, like normal humans, but children, babies born with some severe abnormalities. And so people started to associate them with that folklore. And then there's the more common theory. And I agree with this too. I think that in some cases when you have some people from Ireland in this case, maybe encountering some foreigners, other people from other cultures, some of them even falling in love with those other people like some Finland people or some women from there. It seems like the idea was that those women more commonly wore seal skin as clothing or had a lot of seal skin within a lot of their transportation like the kayaks that they had and so from afar someone could look at them and real and think to themselves wow it looks like that's part of their body when in, in fact it's not it's just clothing or some other type of of item associated to their travels but from afar it seems like it's something else completely different and so that's what it seems like to me is more likely that those were as, the, as I was reading misinterpreted sightings the idea that it's just uh, mixing up things like somebody thinking it's something else different when in actuality it was just simple clothing and people thinking that it was uh, a, a selkie instead so that makes more sense there's even the idea that sometimes people would see these aborigines these 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 cult these cultures from afar and they would have their clothing next to them in a river just washing them and because of the distance and because of how things looked it looked more like it was part of them like they were either just like in this case taking off their seal skin and that's what the misinterpretation was as well so again much more common I think that's more likely what the ideas or the meanings of these selkies were but still that doesn't explain all these books that have come about about them and then the folklore tied to them too so it could be something different there could be indeed uh, generations of selkies still abound to this day somewhere in those areas so if anyone has any more information about these selkies please post those comments below if anyone has been to those islands or knows those 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 places there in Ireland that they wanted to uh, showcase please uh, post those comments there's bound to be someone that knows someone there that lives there because it's a, if it's as part of much of their folklore as it is um, like here like some of our tall tales then there's bound to be more information out there too so all right everybody thanks again as always take care